Nick Jansen. Dry conditions have dominated the region through the last, you could say, four to five months. Ever since we really moved into summer, we've been pretty dry. For the season, meteorological se summer from June 1st, we were over eight and a half inches below average. That has led to these drought conditions that we have in southeast Minnesota and northeast Iowa. The latest drought monitor was released today, and notice most of the region here in southeast Minnesota, northeast Iowa, in that bright red, that's a severe drought. The one change this week, we now have an, an exceptional drought. Now, this is the first time that the U.S. Drought Monitor, since it started in 2000, has placed an area in southeast Minnesota under that exceptional drought level. So that would be the worst drought category you could be in. If we look at the same type of criteria, this also happened in 1989. That was the last time that we would have met that type of criteria uh, in southeast Minnesota. We look across the upper Midwest as a whole. A lot of red all through Minnesota and Iowa, Wisconsin, and also in northern Minnesota where we do have exceptional drought too, just south of Duluth. Talked about the farming impacts, corn stalks, right? Not good for farming. We need the rainfall. We haven't had it. Corn right now around about two to five feet, normally at eight feet if we would have seasonal type conditions. Hay also having an issue. Fields not growing or short. That means farmers that have to buy the hay and that bumps up those prices. We have river impacts. The South Fork of the Zumbro River, the flow 6% of what it is normally this time of year in northern Olmstead County. The Little Cedar River in Chickasaw County near Iona, just 7% of the flow. Something else that the drought could potentially impact, some of those fall colors. Now, in theory, our peak is normally early October, but with the limited rainfall, we could see a, a, probably a dull type of color. Trees it won't be too as vibrant because of the drought, and we could even see our peak maybe a little earlier. If you like to take in the fall colors, early October, probably looking at more or less late September uh, this year for maybe that peak fall color. We would need some rainfall. Not much on the way here through the next couple days. We are dry Friday, Saturday. Maybe a chance coming up on Sunday, but still we are in this light green and notice that is on the bottom of our legend here on our banner. That means maybe a couple tenths of an inch of rain, so that won't put a dent into that big deficit that we have. Tonight, gradually clearing those skies out. I do think there's a chance for some fog early tomorrow morning, and then we'll see some sunshine, mild conditions. A couple stray showers possible this upcoming weekend too. Temperature outside 57. Notice our dew point at 51. So if we drop those temperatures down, which I do think we will, we could see some patchy fog. There's also some rain outside west of I-35. So St. James, Fairmont, Buffalo Center may be getting into, say, Winnebago, Hancock counties in northern Iowa for a couple little raindrops, but nothing substantial on the way here tonight. That'll fizzle out and really just lead to some cloud cover for tomorrow morning. So we hang on to the clouds tomorrow. I do think we have the chance for some patchy fog developing before 9 a.m. Temperatures rebound. We're into the mid 70s for highs coming up on Friday. Tonight, overnight lows, mid 40s, clearing sky, wind out of the north about 5 to 15 miles per hour. Temperatures 74 for the high on Friday, mostly sunny and mild. Wind out of the north about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll take a look at the 70 forecast, 79 for the high coming up in Rochester on Saturday, 71 then on Sunday. A couple chances for some stray showers, maybe late Saturday into Sunday, and then partly cloudy skies on the way Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday with temperatures in the upper 60s. Pretty fall-like next week, Tom. Be pretty nice.